some success already. Ketchup. Welcome to Salsa and Spice, um, mm. COVID-19 edition at <laughs> home in our living room. Obviously now, um, coronavirus situation, you know, um, we're forced to stay indoors. Um, so we're just going to talk a bit about that, how we're kind of coping with it. Mum made arroz con pollo tonight, which is kind of like of a Colombian comfort food. Um, yeah, do you want to tell the ingredients whilst you pour your yeah. whilst you ruin it with your ketchup no 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 so i'm actually i'm actually improving it well no i'm adding to it with my ketchup because the arroz con pollo on its own is amazing anyway but like most colombians have it with with ketchup sorry not most colombians most latinos because i've had arroz con pollo from ecuadorians and stuff and everyone puts ketchup on it it's just a thing but sharon doesn't like ketchup i like ketchup in general i'm all about the mayonnaise be humble I, <laughs> I mean you could <laughs> I would Ew. I would would you I love mayonnaise I like eat mayonnaise by itself I Seriously? used to do that yeah I used to be in ketchup in, in ketchup in McDonald's kiss kiss like with I the have sachet. never seen you yeah, eat it was, mayonnaise yeah, like it was with Raw. chino and that so arroz con pollo is translated chicken and rice rice and chicken <laughs> rice and chicken so, basically Rice it's chicken, chicken. Yeah, no, but if you were translate Arroz it, is rice, chicken is pollo. Yeah. Chicken and rice. Rice and chicken. Bras ain't loyal. I get a Spanish chick, I make a roast con pollo. Keep my woman fresh so she will never be spoiled. It's not just that basic. Mm. It is... I watched my mum make it today from beginning to end. And a lot of people that don't have patience just throw everything in. Mm. Like, I've made chicken and rice. Rice and chicken before. And there's a few steps that I've missed out because the 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 basics of it, the foundations of the taste are cooking every single part individually mm -hmm. and letting that marinate. Mm -hmm. So all the verduras, all the, um, the side stuff, yeah, with the alinho, which is the salsa and spice, basically, <laughs> all together, that has to all be made in una olla, in a pot separately. Mm -hmm. Then the chicken... Is usually boiled like it's usually like a whole boiled chicken um, and then it's all like shredded but today we just did chicken breast because that's what we had frozen oh so there's no gorditos in it there's no gorditos today um, that's my favorite bit I'm sorry there's no gorditos literally my favorite bit <laughs> is when so for people that are not Latino or Colombian you don't know what it is the best way to explain it is like it's like fried rice from a Chinese store but right. the, but, no, but it's no, not no, fried the, yeah the rice but it's not fried, fried so it's similar you know, someone will just like order a special, a, fried, a special okay. fried rice, yeah, 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 and they'll eat that by themselves. That's what that's essentially what it is. Okay. So besides from the chicken, like shredded chicken, it's got salchicha, which is um, frankfurters, saucis. But we've got chicken frankfurters today because we try not to eat too much pork. Um, and yeah, like peas, sweet corn, carrots. Um, what else is in it? You've got some green beans, you've got uh, some pimenton, which is like red peppers, maybe yeah. some chili. Yeah, chili, but we've got Doña Cholula here to add a bit more spice. I love Doña Cholula. Literally, we go through this like so quickly. So, yeah, um, this is a home comfort treat because. We never really have this. Mm. And you can't really, and you don't really get this in like Latin restaurants. It's no. literally like a home yeah, meal. Yeah, it's kind of like. Although, if you go to like baptisms, baby showers. Yeah. Um, I had one this year. Yeah. A really good one. Maria. No, they to have <laughs> buckets yeah. of arroz con pollo. It's just so it's, easy yeah. to make in a big, in a big olla, in a big pot. Yeah. And you just serve it out and that's the thing like you do, don't really get it at restaurants or something because a lot of the time is something that you have with leftovers so you mm -hmm. you make the consomme the soup with the pollo with the chicken and then the the chicken that's been boiled in that soup any of that's been left over that's what you throw in here with the vegetables and stuff it's just what we need comfort food like you said like at this time i feel like we've been comfort eating every day though <laughs> I was going to say, we need some comfort food, but we've been comfort eating every day. Yeah. I'm not going to lie. Well, okay. So, obviously, we're all in the same situation. Um, yeah. We're pretty much on lockdown. 
um, here in London in the what UK. What day is it today? How are you coping with the situation? And to be fair, like with my question just now, what date is it? I don't even know what date it is, what date is it? Um, sit down. Mm -hmm. um, I'm a little bit lost in time, but I think- Cause I, it's like, we're living in a timeless era right now. Yeah, it's yeah? literally like, like you said before, there's no rush for anything. Mm. There's no concept of time. Like sometimes there is like you might have um, a Zoom meeting or something like that, like you've been having mm -hmm. and stuff. And I've been uh, like getting in video chats with friends and stuff, which is really nice. Like friends that are around the world and will find a time that is is um, convenient for everyone. So that's nice, but it is, it's just like you've got nothing to mm. keep to. Yeah, which like, is really sharp. Someone told me to do something yesterday mm. and I was like, don't rush me. <laughs> like literally there is there is no need to rush anything. There is no deadlines. The future is unknown at the moment, right? We don't know Definitely. what is gonna happen, we don't know when it's gonna happen. We can't set our own deadlines and our own plans. Mm. Like that's what everyone has had to let go of, you know, controlling our time. And that's something that we Just as control. humans yeah, we as humans like kind of crave that control factor and the one yeah. thing we can control in our lives is our time and now that's been stripped away from us. Mm. Do you, what, how did you feel back then from the beginning? So so like from when this all happened and then because you got told to stay at home pretty early. Mm -hmm. But before this all happened, um I had already felt exhausted mm. and not from a personal point of view. Like, yeah, I was tired. I had we had a massive event in February, like that took up a lot of my time, and mm. a lot of us going through a transition within my company as well. Um, and then that kind of was just stopped mm. all of a sudden. I wasn't tired just for me, I was tired for everyone. Like, I could feel people's energies, like, and, and I, I had the thought to myself, like, this is never gonna stop, like, this is adulthood, okay. yeah, like. The only time you do get a rest is on the weekend and we have priorities in the weekend, like cleaning yeah. or... And if you do, you know, sometimes you do have yeah, to take nice. a Saturday or a Sunday or like, you know, self-care Sundays yeah. and stuff, right? And I remember like coming home and thinking, this isn't going to stop. And that's why I was, that's why I really look forward to holidays because that's your, that's mm. your, you know, your downtime where you kind of like let loose a little bit. You don't yeah. have all of those stop, consistent stop, yeah. uh, priorities in your head. Um, even though when we go on holiday, we go ham, <laughs> <laughs> like mm -hmm. we probably come back even more tired. But yeah, like a, I kind of felt everyone's exhaustion before this all even happened. So when it did happen, I was like, okay, this is all happening for a reason. Everyone needs to Everyone's slow down. Stopping. Yeah, like society needs to slow down. Like at the end of the day, companies and workload, it's all self-inflicted. There's these deadlines and everything is man-made. Yeah. Yeah, man -made. So, yeah, like I, I kind of had that realisation very quickly, like, okay, no, we're all meant to slow down mm. and that's cool. And it's, I was kind of like interested to see the outcome of it. And I guess we're still in that process. Yeah, definitely. And I think I felt like, I felt like that a lot too, because it was funny. It was a bit weird for me because I finished 2019 on a high. I spoke about it and said, yeah, I'm just really, really hopeful for 2020. Got a really good feeling about it, really good vibe. I was excited. Um, I had a lot of plans. And then stuff happened in January that literally made me stop, like physically, mentally, emotionally, a lot happened. Mm where everything was out of my control and I just had to stop. My body stopped, literally it couldn't train, couldn't eat how I want, couldn't carry on working, had to literally stop. <laughs> and then it was like slowly, I, I felt like I was slowly coming back to feeling a bit normal again and straight away this happened, this all happened. So I don't know, it kind of felt like it was it was like, you know, when a car's kind of like starting and starting and mm -hmm. you're like starting. Yeah, that's that's how I felt like oh. the whole first two months of the year. And now it's like kaput. Mm -hmm. It's like, yeah, kaput. <laughs> Dude, that's out of it's kaput. <laughs> Literally, <laughs> I have to stop <laughs> and just breathe. Mm -hmm. And that's the thing we've all been made to. Yeah. And how do you feel that 
now because obviously do you still have those same plans and, and kind of like ambitions you did in 2019 yeah i think it has it's it's definitely given me a chance to rest and i think i've gotten to a point where you need rest though my girl works like no I like she doesn't have a schedule like she does have a route no she doesn't no, have a routine there's no routine it's like a mad kind she'll, of she'll come in she'll come home from work at like 4 a.m in the morning and then two days later she'll go into work at another job at like 5 a.m in the morning mm. so her sleep Not pattern that was, day long. yeah her sleep pattern was just yeah. everywhere sometimes on a friday that would be the maddest day and it's, it's like a 24 hour day for me and i'm like a serial napper i'm the best napper there is like, i take naps here and there. i'm not obviously it's the only I way don't take i naps like drake <laughs> But so it has forced me to rest and really just stop and kind of like recalibrate and reevaluate what it is that I want. And the things that I've been doing that are keeping me sane, that I'm really enjoying, that's how what I feel I need to focus on and what's prioritise. So, how are you? What's keeping you sane? So, I am. Um, when I'm like, Tara, Tara, <laughs> Tara. <laughs> Keeping me saying I hate it's like, poker. <laughs> like we there's three women, Latinas, Colombian women. Colombianas, very everyone is of a very different character and it's a very small flat. This is where we've grown up all our lives. Cozy though, but yeah, <laughs> it is. It's lovely. And I'm very grateful that we have mm. that we can stay at home. Yeah. Because a lot it's of, mad that we're both at home as well. At this, at this time, time as well. Yeah. Because a lot a lot of the times we one of us has moved out. Yeah. And um, this time we're both at home and we're both like lucky to be here. Like I, like I was saying, like I've lost practically all my jobs mm -hmm. or they've all closed. But thankfully, like I said, we're at home, we're with family. So I can rely on my family. We're all chipping in. It's not just me out there on my own, like not being able to pay my rent or having to move mm -hmm. back like to, enough, to my home country or whatever, because that's happened to a lot of my friends. They've just had to get up and move. Mm -hmm. Um, before from, things get yeah, worse. from one moment to the next because they can't afford to pay the rent and that's mm. the most basic thing in London mm. um, obviously there's people that are a lot worse um, mm. and we completely understand that but yeah it's it's a it's a confined space and uh, I'm sure we've we've all gotten on each other's nerves more than usual because yeah. because we we're never around each other this much yeah. but something you said the other day that really stood out is as well it has made us more tolerant so because we are in each other's space all the time and maybe we know that we're going to piss each other Trigger off a each bit other. more, mm. now I found myself kind of being like, okay, maybe don't fight back or maybe mm. kind of calm down on this or don't say that, which is good. And it has, like, I, I try and keep rem reminding myself, like, be appreciative and be grateful. And that constant reminder mm. is making me more grateful instantly. Yeah. Something that's been keeping me sane... Um, so like, I've been working from home for the past two weeks. Um, yesterday, I got told that um, I'm getting furloughed from work. So I was working, um, yeah, like five hours a day. Um, obviously had stuff to do. Um, so I, I saw it coming um, and it felt a bit weird. And when it's actually happening, you're like, okay, like, I'm, what am I going to do for the next two months at mm -hmm. home? Like, what am I going to really put my time into and like I, I like to keep quite busy I've kind of for the past maybe 10 days I've got into a routine which I struggled in my everyday life mm. was having that specific morning routine mm. um and I've been doing it every day which is I wake up um I do my morning affirmations 10 minutes or so um then I do a meditation by Oprah and Deepak Chopra and they've got like this 21 days so I'm currently doing that mm. um, and funnily enough it's like all about hope and uncertainty and stuff um, and then I do my yoga which I've, I started yoga I guess like a year or two ago because of you I just grew up very tight and I needed yoga and I, especially it was one of my goals remember this mm. 2020 to stretch every day mm. and I think I, I did well considering like how busy, busy life yeah. gets but then this has finally forced so she does these like 30 day yoga challenges where Adrian Adrian from YouTube my girl <laughs> now she's sick she's so funny as well 
and she's really good for like beginners who, mm. are, who feel uncomfortable or who are super like you know unflexible or they've never done it before and they don't really know how to move their body in that way um and i've been wanting to do the 30 day like every day but it's so hard to to find even like half an hour sometimes and now like i have no excuse mm. and yeah like having that morning routine kind of like just sets me up for the day and i'm only seven days in and like after my yoga this morning i felt so fresh and so good and then um obviously then getting kind of a more like hit cardio workout in later on in the day whether it's lunch 11 o'clock with was <laughs> you know what i mean like people are banging out these workouts online which are amazing it's great yeah um we both worked in the fitness industry for many years too so we've got like loads of pt friends like that are just you know putting it all out there because why not yeah it's a great tool it's yeah. like um a lot of people are doing it for free which is the nicest thing obviously because it obviously it keeps them active mm. and it keeps that kind of community feel, community feel which we've been saying um is great we i feel so much fitter than i did a week ago mm. even though my, my knees broke up <laughs> my left knee is broke up right now um like i just feel like healthier and lighter i think yeah. i've lost weight as well even though we have been eating desserts every day that every needs to stop day. but it was, but it was my birthday, birthday. <laughs> that's our excuse, excuse. <laughs> and i did say after my birthday weekend no more sugar yeah but uh, we've still got all that left over mm -hmm. so we have to get rid of it because in this house we don't waste my friend the other day she came to drop off a brownie and left it at the bottom of the doorstep it was like you know social distancing it's very nice um but i said i've never worked out well i don't think i've worked out this much continuously in mm. like every day and like multiple times a day yeah. like i was saying i forgot to mention so one of my main things was stretching this year because mm. I was injured, right? So I like last summer I kind of overdid it, and I think it's important that people know that as well. Right now, like don't like, overdo, don't it. overdo it. Like mm. if you've never done it before, jumping into a thirty day challenge is a bit intense. Mm. Um, but then if you are gonna do a challenge like that, maybe alter the the exercises and stuff. Like my knee was hurting today, so I didn't do jumping lunges yeah. and it's stuff like that. It's just listening to your body and yeah. being really careful and being really mindful of what you're doing because with any class, if you're doing it from home or if you're doing it anywhere, it's obviously you get that pressure and that that kind of that competitiveness from mm. other people. So you feel the need to keep up. You yeah. really need to listen to your body and this isn't like it's not coming from like a PT or whatever. It's just coming from someone who really understands their body. And mm. I know when my knee is going, or when my ankle is a mess because mm. they are. So I know that I need to stop. Like yoga is is what keeps me sane as well. And it's it takes everything away. It just it really just kind of like with like a like brush like a dust brush it just mm. wipes everything away and it clears my mind because even when i am quiet my mind is still racing it's mm. still really really going but with yoga i don't know it just stops mm. everything I'm, I'm different because something like the only thing that my mind wouldn't be able to stop is when it's being like taken up by something so that's why i think i was always attracted to sport mm. because you're only focused in that game at that moment in time and, and how you, and you're, you're controlling your body yeah. in in relation to, you know, your next move or your next action in that game. Mm. Like, that's all that happens. So, there, therefore, everything else goes away. But, but that's then, also kind of what yoga is. It's like, mm, but it's too, like I'm, I'm, I'm saying for the physical people that that's why they struggle to get into it because there's no... You still have to quiet your mind. It's still It's still very still. It is very still, but I think when, I don't know, for me, like I was thinking of it today, because you can sometimes work out with music. Yeah, like with, with like yoga, I, I like anyway. doing yoga with like R&B music because that's something that settled me. Then, then when I'm doing that, I can focus on the music. And not the yoga. And yeah. may, maybe it's because you learn, you, your body learns to kick a ball without even thinking of it, mm -hmm. right? So you can think of anything else. Mm -hmm. you, you're thinking about the next move. Mm -hmm. So your mind is still moving and active. You're not really thinking about your moves and stuff, which in yoga you have to do. Mm -hmm. So that's probably why I find it difficult. But then when I play music on and I'm playing and I'm doing the yoga, I'm still doing the movements, but my mind is focused on the music. Okay. Whilst if I'm, it's too slow for me because mm -hmm. my mind is going already at 100 that's miles an hour. So I think that's like, yeah i just literally had that realization now and that's why pe people find it difficult people that need to be constantly stimulated, stimulated yeah. um 
yoga can be difficult and meditation can be difficult because your mind is going on you know yeah a madness yeah that makes sense the only thing that i can compare that to is boxing because yoga and boxing do the same for me mm. um i've had to stop boxing because i messed up my wrist but when i was going through um a stint of depression a few years ago boxing was the only thing that got me out of that mm. and like you said it was that kind of like that um, something active and something really physical that you had to focus on and be completely there and, mm. not, and not be able to think about anything think else because you had I had to focus I've, I've never had to focus on something physical like that before because mm. I've never been a sporty person but when I did that because back then being still and quiet with yoga still it was too it was too quiet for me to to not feel upset so even yeah. yoga didn't really help at that point. Mm. Um, and that's then, what I'm saying, yeah, like, a lot of people, you know, go through stuff and then they're like, yeah, yoga does, it does kind of calm you down, but it you still have to control your thoughts because yeah. it's too quiet, it's too yeah. still. Whilst, like, getting those emotions out with sport is, is another way of doing. Yeah. Like, they're all different forms of meditation at Definitely. the end of the day. Yeah, so completely. Um, so that's why I like to do both. Like, at first I was all, like, active, physical energy um and obviously that's taken a toll on my body um it took a toll on my body definitely in the summer i had a boxing fight um but then after the, and i also went to a festival which i've never walked so much in my life where <laughs> i felt like my feet were falling off <laughs> it was the most painful thing yeah and i wore flat shoes like it was just a, an accumulation of things mm. um and then yeah it, last month and stuff I was walking into work at 9am and my feet were hurting mm. and I was like I'm too young for this like do you know what I mean I can fix it it's something that I need to focus on and I can only do that by stretching every single day yeah um it's not going to be fixed by surgery it's a muscle issue it's rehab um so yeah like it's something that it's patience yeah it? it's patience exactly. and it's like uh, it is it is really annoying yeah. it's like I, I I've been lazy with with rehab like I messed mm. up my ankles early on from being in heels mm. um like non-stop from the age of about 19 18 and to the point where like yeah i know that as soon as i like twist it a little bit it's inflamed it swells up mm. and i can't do a lot of um high impact stuff mm. but it is it's rehab and it's it's patience but yoga helps mm. with it all I try it out if you haven't tried it out um because everyone's body is just so different something mm. like that i can do very easily tara might not be able to do and yeah. vice versa like our bodies are just completely different um so yeah so what's something that you want to continue or like for the next two months kind of like commit to or focus on what one of the things that i set for myself is to really really tap into my creativity because i think I'm in such a creative business, but I don't really flex my creative muscles enough. Mm. So, and I, I do really enjoy that. Like I love reading. Like, the last time I read a book was like on holiday. Mm. Literally, it's like a luxury where like I, like I try to listen to podcasts. I listen to podcasts a lot. And I know like some people say, I'll oh, try an audio book, but it's not the same for me. Like I enjoy having the book in my hands and actually reading it. Um, so that's why I keep putting it off and then I don't do it. So I really want to really read more, um, write more. Like I know you're always telling me to write more. <laughs> That's how I told her to write. She started getting angry at me. No, so because, I was like, I'm not going to no, tell her again. Because yes, you, did. No, because but yes, this is the reason why. For, for what I do, for the acting and everything, um, I should be writing more. I should be, and we wanted to write a book and we kind of had this idea for a play and like I had this idea for a script and then this idea for this. So it's like actually getting something down onto paper um, and like now is the best time for it, obviously. <laughs> what about you? What if there's anything that you'd like to continue or change? Um, so obviously I want to like carry on my morning routines and kind of see where that kind of, yeah, stability takes me and stuff. Um, I want to cook more. I never really... I can cook, like I've lived by myself and I can survive, but I've never really learned how to... As much as we love food and I love food, mm. um, and I'm, like, very 
like cultured in terms of you know different cuisines and flavors and stuff like that i i wouldn't i want to learn how to become a good cook um and i guess that's because mum's not the best teacher <laughs> do you know what i'm saying maybe i can have more patience and now i just have the time mm. as well um to, to proper learn and experiment i guess because i do experiment anyway but mm. um i guess just take it to a different level um and yeah read more i used to read a lot like maybe five six years ago mm. like you know where i had this phase of just like learning and reading and stuff and now i do still listen to a lot of podcasts and stuff so i have i have jumped on the audiobook thing because it's it's quicker for me like every day in my commute i'd listen to a podcast or i'd, I'd li listen to a bit of an audiobook mm. um or on a jog and stuff but i want to yeah kind of sit still and and read um like hopefully every night I want to sleep more. Mm. Um, I'm not like you where I can nap and I f or I feel tired and I'm just like 2 p.m., 4 p.m. in the middle of the day. Yeah, but still, that's not healthy. It's not healthy to sleep in bits. Like, that's what I was doing before. Yeah. I was getting my sleep in, in bits. And, like, it, it's like we've read it in, in places and it, there's studies that show and stuff like you should be getting seven hours minimum to get to that deep sleep where you're actually mm. you're actually healing and you're recovering you're letting your body yeah. actually rest and recover and i wasn't doing that i'm usually like on five and i'm good mm. with five and i'm up and ready to go because it's just so you've just kind of hit you've just managed to get to that point where your body's like Ugh. and then you're like but it's not too deep so mm. i was always on the go so you're just constantly going from mm. from one moment to the next and now, like, thank God, like, I do find it easy to sleep so I can just, like, get a good 10 hours in and just really, really... See, I cannot really sleep. get in, like... Re um, have you ever really seen like... me sleep more than 10 hours? Maybe if you're sick or something. Yeah. Yeah, but exactly. that's, it. that's it. Like, my... Like, I just can't. Right, yeah. that's one of my goals. <laughs> and then quarantine, for yeah, hours. <laughs> sleep for 10 hours. <laughs> oh, but yeah. For me to fall asleep like naturally or be wanting to go to sleep, I'd have to do like a strenuous workout in the day as well. Mm. Um, for me to be like, oh, I'm tired. Like, let me lie down in bed. I just want to relax. Yeah. Like, I I've always said this, and people think I'm weird, but I find sleep boring because you're not conscious. What? Do you know what I mean? So you know, like the other night, the other night was was Tara's birthday. Quite the oh, Okay. <laughs> They all mesh into one. <laughs> so the other night was your birthday, and obviously our fam like co only cousins came round. Everyone is safe. Everyone is safe. <laughs> Don't worry. It was like some massive house party, and like I'm super trooper in it. Like super I and I and the reason I'm super trooper. So this is a nickname that they give a me very because old nickname. <laughs> like on the what was the last one standing? I'm the last one standing. Like Don't know how I I don't want the night to end. Yeah because I'm having a good time. Yeah, So which makes sense. Yeah, exactly. But so, on a day to day. <laughs> no, I know, but then having a good time might be watching Netflix and finishing that series or or listening to music mm. or, or, you know, um, reading, whatever. Even though reading makes me go to sleep, so I should probably read more before, mm. before going to bed. That's why I want to start doing that. Um, but like, me having a conscious good time in like Stop in life sleeping. doesn't make me want to go into sleep mode because i'm unconscious okay so that's why i've always said i find it boring because the only the only time you really enjoy sleep is when you wake up and you're like oh i don't have to go work anymore and i and then you go back to sleep that's not the really, only not that's really. the I, best I, I time love, like i literally cannot wait to get into my bed when i'm tired and i'm just thinking of my marita and just like getting all like wrapped up and yeah. just cold yeah that's nice but you can do that while still being awake no i do love I mean, like, drifting off yeah yeah exactly I I, and that's the thing i i don't drift off mm. i hardly ever drift off I don't know, maybe that's because I got too much energy, and like I said, I need to do a strenuous workout for my mm. body to to want to drift off. I'm feeling like I want to go to bed. <laughs> <laughs> right. I mean, maybe other itis. <laughs> you know when you when you eat and you're like all comfy, you just want to get into bed. <laughs> 
Yeah. Um, so yeah, I want to sleep more, which I haven't done really these two weeks because I've had to wake up and go to work. To work um, yeah. So I think I want to develop the habit of going to sleep. Sleep loads, babe. Get that beauty sleeping. I know, yeah. I know. I want to be like in the quarantine looking like babies. I've been sleeping so much. Yeah, but this is the thing. Like, I'm the type of person where I just like, I shouldn't be sleeping, I shouldn't be reading, or I should be doing this. No, and this is the thing. I know that. I know that. And I, like, I I know that you're like that because you're a very active person. And I can be like that a lot because I'm an Aries and I'm a very typical Aries. I will say it and I will recommend it a lot and sometimes I don't practice it a lot but I honestly think it is the it's just the best way to live like there's not you don't always have to be achieving or learning or or finding something and you've been telling me that for years like stop like just do nothing you have like you have such high expectations of yourself Mm. and of everyone else around you like but mostly of yourself so you're always like what what else can i do what else can i learn where do i go from here and i've managed to to stop that a few times but then life being in london society Mm. that all makes you jump on that bandwagon again and it is a very like I think it is a big thing of being a Londoner it's a it's a, it's a city it? thing yeah definitely like you got you've traveled you got to, you've got to travel to understand that not everyone like people yeah not not every society moves like that yeah yeah everything is a lot more chilled yeah. and anything that we can take from this is like the pos- the positives like what we've been saying mm-hmm. is like just recharging and the city needs to recharge yeah. that I feel like the environment needs to recharge the like, i think it's in, important as well to focus on the positives because then you're just going to get yourself into into a, a, a negative you know hole and stuff and that's a like you know thing. I, i'm not watching the news every night yeah. i'm not like obviously it, naturally we've never seen I, I said this the other day i've never watched the news so much in my life because yeah. i made that that conscious decision a long time ago me too mum always Don't watches watch the, the 10 news. o'clock news um, you know, I stop. I used to read the, the Metro every morning when I used to go to school and stuff. And I, I don't stopped even, that. Yeah. I stopped reading the news. No like, newspapers. I, I think right. like three, four years ago now. Mm-hmm. Um, and obviously, I feel like when you're forced to change your daily living, you have to be aware of what is going on. But then it got to a point where it was just like, okay, I'm like, I'm. It's draining me. I'm tired. I don't yeah, want to exactly. keep knowing. I don't want to keep seeing the numbers go up because yeah, it does feel like it's getting closer and closer and closer. Mm. And every day you hear of someone that you know that's got the virus. And um, you know, last week I got sick, and mm. no one knows how to how to test it if you're not tested you, you don't know if you had it or not mm-hmm. and maybe i did have it you know like maybe you we've all had it mm-hmm. but we don't know that so it's just about yeah keeping a positive mindset yeah and, 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 is... and focusing on yeah like your daily habits because that's how we're living day by day it's also a big issue that i think people like have been talking about and um i know i feel it a lot like the guilt like because the, there's a big there's a big feeling of guilt that comes with um kind of turning a blind eye and kind of saying oh you know like ojos que no ven corazón que no siente kind of thing where it's like I'd rather not watch the news because then it's not affecting me but like you said every day we're hearing of more people we're hearing of someone that knows someone someone but I don't think we should feel guilt for wanting and it's not blocking it out and I think that's what's important to remember that it's not blocking it out it's still like seeing the updates or still being aware of everything that's going on, but yeah, keeping a positive mindset because the more that you fixate on the negative, the more you're gonna stress out, the more you're gonna bring in that negative energy and you're gonna attract all of this, like this sadness around Mm. you. And you know that that's contagious. Like if one person is sad, you're gonna pass that on to the next person Mm. in your household. You're gonna not be able to speak to your friends. You're not gonna, but it's okay interact. to it's, it's okay to feel sad as well. Like I've I've had down days. Of course, You've had down of course, days it, of like course it, it happens. But it happens to everyone. It's important to be conscious to strive to that positive mindset rather yeah. than you know going down and and kind of snap out of it when you need to. Um, yeah, like it, like you said, it is. It's okay to feel that scared. way. And like, naturally, but then also not feel guilty. I think that it's the guilt that kind of like just gets to me a lot because. I don't know, like you can feel sad or you can feel upset and you feel you feel guilty for feeling upset or you can feel 
really happy and hopeful and feel guilty for feeling mm. happy. Either way, yeah. yeah, so it's just like trying to not feel the guilt and really sitting in that emotion that you're feeling, whether it is negative or positive, and then being able to be to see like, okay, I'm feeling this way, it's temporary, mm. and then being able to get yourself out of that and then and using whatever method works for you to get out of that. If it is cooking, if it's just going out into your garden and doing something or jumping on Facebook or WhatsApp and video calling someone. But yeah, just try not to not to fixate on the guilt. Do you want to say guilt again? <laughs> <laughs> so it's the 1st of April today. Thank you. I kept thinking, what is the date? <laughs> I kept, I said it like three times. What's the date today? Yeah. I had um, no idea. So it's the start of the month. Happy April Fools. Yeah. Like, Did you get I, any I April Fools? No, mate. Is you that... didn't get any April Fools? No. Sorry, if you're doing April Fools in this kind of period, I just don't rate it. Hey, like... I got one and I know it's been, it's been sending around a, a while and three people sent it to me. Was so. it? I'm pregnant. No, it was the biggest one. No, though. it was just like because obviously you know me when you get a WhatsApp message. That, oh, the make your photo. Yeah, that's been getting sent around since last week. Why? I got that last week. Why have people do this since last week? Is April Fool's Day? This is what I'm saying. Everyone because everyone's bored and, and they want. I was like, I oh, just that's how many, it's how many April times? Day. How many times I've said to someone, it's not April Fool's Day yet. It's not no. April Fool's Day yet. Like because people are bored. Well, I only got that text twice, three times today. Sorry, and I thought it was funny. So, but yeah, so it's first first of April today, and I guess we've got two more weeks of this. I mean, two more months of this. Mm -hmm. Well, that's months what they've before. said. Um, yeah, it, it seems to be like this is gonna go on till June, whatever. So yeah, yeah, I don't know. I don't what, know how long we have. I don't know how long we'll have this mic for, for before Tara sends it back. Yeah, like I guess we'll maybe do weekly updates to see how um, quarantine life is going. If we're still sane. Yeah. If we've still got all our hair or we've got more canas coming through. Might might see me with shorter hair next time, innit? Because I'm going to chop it off. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's another thing that I've been doing a lot is... Looking after your hair. Yeah. Cur curly girl hair routine is... <laughs> Yo, it's a different level of commitment. So... <laughs> Talk about commitments. My hair is going is definitely one. So yeah. yeah, so we'll do another one in a couple of weeks with another dish, hopefully. Yeah, and maybe and maybe I'll it. make this one. Oh, okay. Mhm. Mm right, okay. Oh yeah. Stay safe, everyone. Stay sane. Wash your paws. <laughs> I thought you were about to say wash your pum. <laughs> your paws. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you should always wash that, but yeah. I mean, you know, not you know, everyone's not washing daily. Well, I'm washing daily because <laughs> I'm working out every single day. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, yeah. Sometimes you shower at like two, three o'clock in the uh, in the afternoon. And you're like, okay, I really should shower because I smell. Yeah, but ain't no one smelling you, so. She's talking about you in general because I do my. No, I'm talking about everyone in general. Like, yeah, today I. I <laughs> met I... everyone I saw. Like, what's wrong with you? <laughs> no, I'm saying you. You in, in general. Yeah, exactly. Anyway, yeah. stay clean, stay, stay safe. safe. <laughs> blessings and blessings. Bye. Okay. Round two of arroz con pollo? Yeah. You're down. Definitely.